in this video we're going to take a look at exam revision for expanding and factorising quadratics. So like always what I'd say here is pause the video, have a look at the questions we work through and then double check that your solution matches what we get on the screen. So that's everything that we need here to get started, let's begin with question 1. So for question 1 here, so for question 1 we've got two parts, let's begin with part A. And what you can see here with the layout is a pretty standard kind of like exam style question. Part A will normally just say expand and simplify and then you'll be giving you double brackets and then in part B it'll say factorize and then you'll be given a quadratic like this. Okay, so for part A then we've got two brackets. I've got 4A minus 1, so 4A minus 1 and A plus 3. So the way that I like to expand double brackets like this is by using FOIL. But like we saw in the video for expanding double brackets like this, you can also use the grid method as well. Okay, and that's absolutely fine. But for this video, I'm going to use the method of file. Okay, so using file here, or so using file, then to expand these double brackets here, we begin by multiplying the first term in each bracket. I'm going to do 4a times a here. So 4a times a, that will give me 4a squared. So we'll do it above here. I'm going to get 4a squared to begin with. We then move on to the O here in FOIL, so that tells us it's the outside terms now. So in other words, the two that are furthest apart here, that would be 4a times positive 3. In that case, we'll get positive 12a here, so plus 12a. Moving on to the I now in FOIL, so that's the inside terms here. That would be the two that are closest together, so minus 1 times a here. So be careful with your signs here, this would give us minus a. Then moving on to the L here in FOIL, that means when I multiply the last term in each bracket together. So minus 1 times positive 3, and that would give us minus 3 there. Okay, so what we've done there is we've expanded the double brackets, but we also need to simplify. If we simplify here, let's just do that below. I've got 4a squared, we can't do anything with that. I've then got 12a minus a. So what we're doing here is we're just collecting like terms. So 12a minus a. That would give me plus 11a. And then finally minus 3 here, and there we have it. So that's the solution to a. So we move on to b now. It says factorize, and then we've got this quadratic here. So let's just begin by writing down the quadratic. For x squared minus 5x plus 4. So the way that I like to factorize a quadratic like this is by using team. So using team here, but what I need now are two numbers that I can times together to get my end number, which is positive 4, but be able to add those two numbers together to get the middle number, minus 5. So what I'm going to do here to begin with is just pick two numbers that I can times together to get 4. So there's quite a few different options here. So sometimes what you'll do is you'll spot these two numbers straight away. Sometimes it might take a little bit of trial and error. So if we think about it here, in terms of the numbers that I can pick, I could have 2 and 2. Like I said, just two numbers that you can times together to get 4. So 2 and 2, um, I could have 4 and 1. So 4 and 1. I could have um, I could have the negatives here, so minus 2 and minus 2. When you times those together, you'll get positive 4. And same again here, I could have minus 4 and minus 1. And I think that's all our options here. Um, so let's just work our way through for now. So 2 and 2 here. So 2 times 2 is 4. If you add these together here, you don't get minus 5. So 2 plus 2 is 4 rather than minus 5. It won't be 2 and 2. Doing the same now with 4 and 1. So 4 times 1 gives me 4. Perfect. If we add these together here, 4 plus 1, we get 5 rather than minus 5. And that's important because we do need the same sign here. Okay, so it's not going to be 4 and 1. And it won't be minus 2 and minus 2 here, okay? Because if you times those together, you'll get positive 4. If you add these together here, you don't get minus 5. So it's not minus 2 and minus 2. But with minus 4 and minus 1, if you times these together here, we're going to get positive 4. And then if you add these together here, it's the same as minus 4, minus 1, giving us minus 5. So we found the correct pair there, minus 4 and minus 1. So now we need to actually factorize this here. Remember, we're factorizing a quadratic like this. This means we're now putting it into double brackets. So two brackets here, like so. So 
because we're doing this here for the variable x, we're going to get an x at the front of both of these brackets, like so. And now my two numbers here will be this pair here. Okay, so we've done all the hard work here, put the numbers in as we see them. So it's going to be x minus 4. That's supposed to be a minus L. Let me just um, erase that just so it doesn't cause any confusion. So x minus 4 and then x minus 1. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to B and the solution to question 1. So we move on to question 2 now. Like you can see, the layout is almost identical. So if we begin with pi A, again, we're just expanding and simplifying these double brackets here. I've got y minus 5 times y plus 5. So again, to expand these double brackets here, I'm going to use FOIL. So using FOIL here, but remember FOIL tells us the order. So we multiply the first two terms together, so y times y, which would give us y squared. We then move on to the O here, so the outside term, so y times positive 5, which would give us plus 5y. We get plus 5y there. The inside terms now, so that's the i, so minus 5 times y, that would give us minus 5y. And then finally, moving on to the last two terms here, minus 5 times positive 5. So minus 5 times positive 5 here, that would give us minus 25. So what we need to do now is just simplify this here. So collecting like terms, we're going to get y squared plus 5y minus 5y. They will just cancel. They'll just give us 0, basically. And then minus 25 here, can't do anything with. So all we get then is y squared minus 25. And hopefully what you recognize here is this is the difference of two squares. Okay, so that's the solution to A. Moving on to B now. We're asked to factorize A squared plus 10A plus 24. Okay, so for B now, I'm going to use team here. I need two numbers that I can times to get the end number here, which is positive 24. But also add to get the middle number, positive 10. So just pick a few numbers here that will multiply to give us 24. I could do 12 and 2. I could do um, I could do 4 and 6. And I could do 24 and 1. And we'll just pick these three for now. I think we should have our solution within this um, within our choices here, basically. So 12 and 2, if we multiply those together, we do get 24. If we add those together, 12 plus 2, that would give us 14 rather than 10. So it's not 12 and 2. 4 and 6 now, so 4 times 6 would give us 24. Perfect. And if we add these together here, 4 plus 6, we do get 10. So what we've done there is we found the correct pair. So now we actually factorize this here, put it into double brackets, like so. Working with the variable a here, so we're going to get an a at the front of both of these brackets, like so. And now we just put the numbers that we found in here. So it's going to be a plus 4 and a plus 6. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to b and the solution to question 2. Moving on to question 3 now. Again, we've got two parts here. So let's begin with part a. So for part a, we're asked to expand and simplify these double brackets here. We've got 3 minus x here. And in the other bracket, we've got x plus 7. So again, just to expand these double brackets here, we're going to use FOIL. So FOIL here, then as the order. Multiply the first two terms together, so 3 times x, that would give us 3x. Then do the outside terms here, so that's going to be 3 times positive 7, that would give us positive 21. So plus 21 there. Now we do the inside terms here, so that's going to be minus x times positive x here. Just be careful with the signs here. This would give us minus x squared. So minus x squared. And then multiply the last terms together here. So that's going to be minus x times positive 7. So in that case, then we'll get minus 7x. All we need to do here now to finish with is just simplify. I've got minus x squared here, so we'll put that at the front. Minus x squared, we can't do anything with that. I've then got 3x minus 7x, that would give me minus 4x. Minus 4x, and then plus 21 here. Okay. And there we have it, so that's the solution to A. Moving on to B now. 
just to factorise c squared minus 36. So what I'm hoping you might notice here straight away, that we actually have the difference of two squares, okay? So because we've got the difference of two squares here, and it's really easy to factorise something like this, we will still get double brackets. We are factorising a quadratic, so we get double brackets, like so. We're doing it for the variable c here, so we'll get a c at the front of both of these brackets, like so. And now, to find the number here, all we do is we square root this number here. So think of this as positive now. We've got the square root of 36, well that would be 6. We take one of them as positive and the other as negative. So we get c plus 6 and c minus 6 there. Okay, and there we have it. So like you can see, part b there, it looks a little bit different. But once you just notice that it's the difference of two squares, it's actually really quite straightforward to simplify. Take the square root of this number here and then take one as positive, one as negative, okay? And there we have it, so that's the solution to B, and the solution to question three. And finally, we take a look at the very last question here, question four, again, we've got two parts. So let's begin with part A. We're asked to expand and simplify these double brackets here. Let's just write down the brackets to begin with. So 4A plus four times 2A minus 10. So to expand these double brackets here, just like we've done for the previous few questions now, I'm going to use FOIL. So we're using FOIL here. So we start by multiplying the first term inside each bracket together. So 4a times 2a, that will give me a a squared. Moving on to the O now, so the outside term, so that's going to be 4a times minus 10, giving me, giving me minus 40a. And onto the i now, so the inside terms here, so that's going to be 4 times 2a, that would give me plus aa. And then finally the l here, 4 times minus 10, giving us minus 40. Okay, so to finish with here now, all we need to do is simplify, in other words, collect like terms. So we can't do anything with the aa squared here. We leave that as it is. Minus 40a plus aa. That will give me minus 32a. And then finally, minus 40 here. Again, we can't do anything with that, so we just leave it as it is. Get minus 40 there. And there we have it. So that's the solution to a. And then we move on to b now. We have to factorize m squared plus 6m minus 16. So to factorize a quadratic like this, I'm going to use team here. We need to find two numbers that we can time to get the end number here, minus 16. Also add to get my middle number here, positive 6. So just picking some numbers here now that we can multiply to get minus 16. I could have uh, minus 2 and 8, so let's just do this underneath. Minus 2 and 8. We could have minus 16 and 1. And we could also have minus 1 and 16. So let's just go with these three for now. Let's see if we've got our solution um, within these choices here. So minus 2 times 8 gives me minus 16, and then minus 2 plus 8 does give me um, positive 6 here, so that's perfect. We found the correct choice here on the first go. So now we factorise this here, we're putting it into double brackets, so an M in front of both brackets here, like so. Now all we need to do here is just put the numbers in, so M minus 2, and then M plus 8, okay? And there we have it, so it's as easy as that. That gives the solution to B, and the solution to question four overall. And that brings us to the end of this video on exam revision for expanding and factorizing quadratics. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to solve quadratic equations by factorizing.